Hi, today I want to look at a game where I'm playing white against the player under the alias Blind Squirrel. This was a 5 minute auto pairing game on the Internet Chess Club on the 23rd of October 2009. My rating is 2284 and my opponent's is 2404. Some viewers have noted that I show too many of my own wins. Here's another one of my losses. As I have said before, losses are the key to chess growth. Or to be more specific, studying your losses is the key. In this position, it is equal material. My queen side is threatened, so I try to open up the position with c4. b takes c4 is forced. Bishop takes c4. And now bishop takes c4, queen takes c4. Ribka recommends the amazing queen e6 as apparently the only move that equalizes. I think that it should have some drawback after queen takes e6, f takes e6, but white has a hard time attacking black's doubled pawns. For example, rook d1, king f7, rook e3, bishop d4, rook e4, rook d5, rook f e1, bishop c3. The basic idea is that um, white has a hard time trying to attack these weak pawns, or apparently weak pawns. In the game, my opponent played 25 e6. If you consider the, uh, the move bishop takes c4 uh, to have equalized, then this move should be considered inaccurate. Bishop d6. The bishop suddenly comes alive and restricts the coordination of the black army. Rook f8, b5. I try to open up the posi position on the queen side and make a passed pawn. And here bishop f8 may have been better, resolving to trade off my strong bishop. Bishop takes f8, rook takes f8, a4, gives white a slight advantage due to his queenside majority, but black has good drawing chances. My opponent played rook c8, which is a slight error. And here b6 is possible, and probably better than what I played in the game. a takes b6, c takes b6, now white threatens b7 followed by b8 queen, so queen d8, attacking the bishop, and the pawn on b6. Bishop c5, rook b8. Bishop takes d5, c takes d5, queen b3. And white has sig a significant advantage on account of his faster pawns and black's uncoordinated pieces. In the game I played bishop takes d5, which is probably not so accurate. e takes d5 would lose a pawn to b takes c6, rook takes c6, rook takes d5. So my opponent played c takes d5. a4. White's pawns look threatening, but it would it would be a long time before he can get some meaningful play going. Rook e d8 was a better move, threatening rook takes d6. And now, bishop g3, black can advance his own pawns with d4. The position is still slightly better for white, however, after the move c6. Instead, my opponent played 29 queen c3, which is um, a slight error. Queen takes c3, bishop takes c3. And the problem with a move like b6 is that after a takes b6, c takes b6, rook c6, bishop c7, rook c8, black will sacrifice the exchange for a pawn after, for example, after rook b1, rook 6 takes c7, b takes c7, rook takes c7, leaving him with reasonable counterplay. Although white is still better. This, is, this was probably better than what I played in the game. I played, in the game I played 31 rook c1. And I was expecting 31 d4 when rook fd1, rook ed8, f4 limits black's pawns and gives white an edge. Uh, what I mean by limiting black's pawns is that the um, f4 pawn covers the e5 square so that black's pawn cannot advance. Bishop a5. The bishop at a5 actually stops my queenside advance rather nicely. After the game, I preferred bishop f8, just trying to hold on to the black pawns. Most of his kingside pawns are on light squares, making them hard to advance. Black should play king f8, with the idea that after rook fd1, king e7, rook d3, f6, his pawns start rolling. Nevertheless, white maintains an advantage after bishop d6 check, king f7, c6. In the game, I played f4, 
I was trying to limit the black pawns much like the move bishop e5. And here bishop d2, rook c2, bishop e3 check, king h1, d4 was an alternative. Black doesn't get any real counterplay though, and white can si simply advance with a5. Note that if black keeps advancing his passed pawn with d3, white simply plays rook c3 and he wins the pawn because of the pin. So my opponent played f6. This move prevents bishop e5. Perhaps white should get c6 in while he still has the chance. King f7, king f2, bishop c7, bishop takes c7, rook takes c7, rook c3, with a clear advantage to white. In the game, I played 33, rook fd1. This move stops e5, stops the advance e5 by pressuring the d5 pawn. King f7. Black doesn't appear to have a clear plan, but his fortress is solid. And now c6 was better, just advancing my queenside majority. But I played um, the inaccurate move h3. I was just giving my king some room uh, in case it ever needs to flee to h2. But white is playing too slowly, he should advance quicker. And specifically this move is bad because of rook ed8. Now white's bishop cannot escape, and as a result, he cannot move his c5 pawn, nor his queenside majority. Black now threatens bishop b4, tying white, tying the white pieces up even further. And now rook b1 stops bishop b4 and leaves white with an edge. Stuck with no obvious plan, since my queenside is frozen, I blundered with 35 rook c2. How does black win here? Black can exploit the pin with rook takes d6, winning a piece. I am hopelessly lost, but I played a couple more moves. Rook dc1, rook d7, c6, just in case I had some form of compensation on account of my past pawns. But finally I saw that there was no hope, and after rook dc7, I resigned. Black has blockaded my pawns and will play king e7 to d6, followed by the marching of his central pawns. Thanks for watching this video.